OK, so this is a good example. I put this up here because a lot of students, even though uh, you can see, oh, they both have an x, so we know that our denominator is going to be x. A lot of students will get mixed up again on you know, what exactly do I do with these numerators. Remember, once we have our same denominators, we just need to apply the operation to the numerators. And I'm just going to write it out there, um, right out here, because it, it's a, a numeric problem that gets a lot of students. So what is negative 2 minus 1? All right. So a lot of times when looking at this, I always like to think about money. Minus 2 is going to mean that you owe money, right? So if you owe $2 and then you minus, so you borrow another dollar, how much money do you owe? Well, now you're going to be in debt $3. So a negative 2 minus 1 is going to be negative 3. Another way we can do this, um, remember we can always write a subtraction problem as an addition problem. So if I change this to addition, and I make this negative. Negative 2 plus negative 1 equals negative 3. Therefore, that's how we're going to combine our numerators. So we'll have negative 3 divided by x. If I wanted to write a restriction, I would say x cannot equal 0 because we cannot, the only value that x cannot be is 0 because we can't divide negative 3 by 0. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you simplify this rational expression. Thanks.